A couple years after H1Z1, many gaming industries tried to capitalize on the popularity of the battle royale genre. Most were unsuccessful. There was one company that made an astronomical success. Epic Games. In September of 2017, Fortnite was released in early access. Initially, it was a PvE action-building co-op campaign with a free battle royale version that came along with it. What made the BR theme unique was a new mechanic called building. This was a skill that was never seen in a shooter, let alone a battle royale. The BR version of Fortnite became so successful, it overtook the original Fortnite game and changed the way we looked at gaming. It would bring in ever-changing seasons, store updates, and eventual collaborations with some of the biggest brands in the history of entertainment, all while being a free-to-play shooter game. The free-to-play aspect for this genre would then influence many games to follow a similar format, although the ever-growing success would eventually create a decline. Like, the community of these little f kids is just so dumb. It really is, man. It's not fun. The lack of listening to a community really put a bad taste in the community's mouth over the years. It started when Epic added planes and mechs into the game, to broken guns, and slowly minimizing the skill gap. It was obvious that Epic's focus was bringing the best experience to the casual player, while ignoring the competitive player who had already spent hundreds of hours and dollars into their game. It still has great numbers on Twitch and YouTube, but with bigger streamers wanting to switch to other games. You know, I wanted to love love Fortnite, but uh, I, I wasn't able to. Although Fortnite did some astronomical things for gaming and especially the battle royale genre, there was still some room for competition and improvement. This is where Call of Duty Warzone came into play. The release date of Call of Duty was March 10, 2020. A new competitor for the genre and the brand recognition gave them a great opportunity to take advantage of battle royales. One thing that Warzone did so well is being able to get back into the game with 150 players set to survive on an island. Call of Duty did something that was very innovative for BRs. The Gulag was introduced giving players a random gun and a chance to 1v1 another player who was eliminated to get right back in the action. Also the buyback system System, which gave players a chance to collect money and buy their teammates back. Call of Duty kept players invested in the game, rather than watching their surviving team try to win in spectate mode. It's a load of fun and people camp way less than in normal solos and tend to be more aggressive in their playstyle. And for me, that works perfectly. Warzone did a lot of things right when it came to polishing off the BR genre to keep its players engaged with an increasing amount of action. This, however, didn't keep players from noticing what was so obvious about Warzone's downfall. Thousands of hackers were swarming the game with cheats and aimbot, ruining the experience for players of all skill levels. Many creators spoke up about this on stream, social media, and anywhere they could try and let the devs know how to fix the game. Lots of massive creators have moved on to other games, genres, and even other battle royales because of how unplayable Warzone has become. This is legitimately the state of Warzone right now. I am not, I am not kidding you. The last three games that I have spectated over two days have had cheaters in, in the last three of them. This guy has an 85 KD. 85? Where, how is there no automated system? Now, after seeing the successes and the failures of both Fortnite and Warzone, we can now take a look at why Apex mastered the battle royale genre. But before we get into that, let's rewind to the origin of Apex Legends. It all started with the Titanfall series. Titanfall walked so Apex could run. The first person fast paced shooters encouraged a game where players had more freedom to move along the map while running, using abilities, and overtaking Titans, these massive and powerful mech style robots. These games were beloved and still talked about by many while also giving Respawn the framework to make a successful game. When it came to making a BR, Respawn had other plans. Respawn didn't bring in Titans from the Titanfall series because they wanted to explore opportunities of a new world. 
while making something that fit the battle royale genre. Game design Mackie McClandish was interviewed, and he said the Titan as a mechanic tends to fulfill the fantasy of a giant robot. He said it has to almost trivially destroy other players. It's like playing poker and holding four aces. They could have made the Titan a limited time mode that allowed people to briefly live out that power fantasy, but that's not a sustainable way to play in Battle Royale. We saw that three-man squads was a way for us to differentiate from all other games. This may also explain why they didn't bring over the wall running. They were taking out aspects that they felt would not work with Apex. Respawn knew that they had the opportunity after being fully acquired by EA in 2017. In almost every way they could think of, Respawn tried to create a bunch of originality, craftsmanship, and even hype around the release of Apex. The name of the game changed from Survival to Apex Predator. King's Canyon became more like King's Canyon we know today. Knowing that many of our fans would be expecting another traditional Titanfall game, we opted to go with a secret launch so players could immediately play the game when they first heard about it. February 4th, 2019, the release of Apex. Many streamers were invited to do a secret playthrough of the game to build the hype around a brand new battle royale. A few days before launch, Respawn held a private event in Los Angeles to show the game to the top streamers, content creators, and media. After a presentation, the creators got to play the game for about two hours. Two hours turned into eight, and they didn't want to put the game down. Apex Legends uses a ping system to ease the burden of mic-free communication. Apex Legends led in Respawn Beacons, and shortly after Fortnite added in their own version of the reboot fans. Apex also offers many different playable characters with big personalities and abilities that fit your playstyle. This keeps the game fresh, even for someone with hundreds of hours in the game, because there's always a new way to learn the game and a new way to play. Also, Apex has a wide variety of maps, now in Season 11 with King's Canyon, World's Edge, Olympus, and now Storm Point. These maps get updated as well, so Apex has a huge advantage of map variety compared to games like Fortnite and Warzone, with only one playable map for BR. The characters also have a backstory, and Apex itself brings an invigorating and interesting story through their trailers, giving Titanfall fans a sense of nostalgia and excitement, but also interesting enough for current Apex players. What makes Apex so great with the abilities and the free-feeling movement can also be a double-edged sword, because balancing the game while adding new characters and guns can make the playing field more and more complicated as we move on. Despite how great the game is, it isn't all sunshine and rainbows. Apex has its own hands full with high-ranked lobbies filled with cheaters, hackers, and aimbots. Many of the top creators have ran into these cheaters, having their RP stripped away and making their live streams a lot more stressful and less fun. What's up, bitch? Huh? Nice cheats you got there, dumbass! Across a plethora of reviews, everything from bad servers, bugs, loading screen freezes, cheaters, footstep audio, a lack of net code improvements, no real transparency or plan for improvement, and an insistence that Respawn prioritizes the story over the game. A big part of what hurt Fortnite is the lack of communication with the community and focusing on the game's priorities rather than the players themselves. Apex needs to learn from Epic's mistakes and listen to the feedback of the community who care about the game and push it to be better, not just the typical dead game ratio commenters. One major flaw or obstacle that Apex faces is the game is essentially successful off of one mode. Games like Fortnite would do in-game events, different modes, and consistently run tournaments through the game, along with creative mode and what that has to offer. Also Call of Duty having their variety of modes along with a story mode to lean on for more traditional type gamers. Apex is only starting to expand other than having the BR mode into arenas, which is a focused 3v3 combat mode. Apex definitely capitalizes on what they do best, which is what makes it a well-made game. But is that enough before the crowd starts to move on to the next big thing? The future of Apex can play a big role in seeing how Battle Royale lives on or dies. What do you think the future is for Battle Royales? Let me know in the comments down below what you think Respawn could do to evolve their game for years to come.